Well, welcome back to episode 12 of Don't Try This at Home, Lengthening a Drive Shaft. And if you haven't watched episode 11, you need to go back and do that because where we're going to take off from right now is, you know, the other day it's worth of work that got us to this point of getting this drive shaft all lined up. We're ready to cut it and uh, we're going to just lengthen it an inch because this uh, 49 Chev that this Cadillac is going under is an inch longer in the wheelbase than the, sh than the Cadillac. So we stretched the Cadillac chassis right out in the drive shaft. Here's the last part. I guess the other thing I could have done was cut the 49 Chev in half and cut an inch out of it and shortened it. That'd be the opposite look to a nice chopped roof though, wouldn't it? So we didn't do that. We stretched the Cadillac instead. <laughs> All right, so hang on for some bold, brash moves as we lengthen our own drive shaft. So with that light on, I use this little V-shaped thing here and the level. And so if I get a point on here at which this is straight on the pipe okay level on the top bubble and it's right on that little node there then i go over to this one do the same thing level it up and make sure that it's right on that little node the same okay and then down at this end this is going to be the the important one and i've jimmied it until i uh, wiggled it around until i got it exactly on that little node as well so all that does is give me a straight line through the universal joint so that when I spin it, turn it, there's not going to be any wobble here. That's, that's, all I, that's all I wanted to get out of that. No wobble there. So before we cut this, we want to check this for out around. We'll set the dial gauge here on like zero, something like that. Probably five thousandths out of round. I mean, that could be the paint or anything, right? So that's that's running pretty true. Now let's just move over to the other side of this. We got, and I think we've got probably more like fifteen thousandths wobble here. Okay, so if that's the standard, we should have no problem meeting it. <laughs> and this is the very far end. Okay, so it goes down 20 thousandths. So obviously, the pipe that they've welded on there is not as aligned <laughs> um, as it could be. This is a very important line. But the purpose of that is that when you cut this and you spread it apart or bring it together, depending if you're shortening or lengthening, you still want that line to line up because the way the thing is engineered, this rubber flange and the rubber flange on the other end are obviously intentionally out of alignment. And it's probably so that they don't set up a, you know, some kind of a vibration. They'll counteract each other. As far as I can tell, that looks pretty good. The thing we have to be careful of when we're cutting it is, and I've got a, I've got a block under here just to hold this up. It's actually just barely rubbing on here. I smashed this pipe down to where it's the right flatness, right? So this is, you know, just barely rubbing on there. So that'll hold this up. But this thing here is going to tend to want to buckle down, follow the blade. So we want to make sure that we hang on to it and, um, and don't let it jam itself in there. Otherwise we lose our alignment. So the other thing we can do to make a straight cut here is we can turn this, rotate this as we're cutting and don't cut in too deep. There's our inch. We're going to clean up inside of those. Then I'll show you the next trick 
to get a alignment along the axis that's going to make it perfect. Measuring with a dial gauge is just a check. We can't really actually put it together by measuring with a dial gauge. <laughs> you know, hold it here and get it just right. I don't think so. Okay, so there's a bunch of cardboard rolled up inside of there. <laughs> um, that must be some kind of a high-end damping system for race cars or something. Another peculiarity. See that black, black line running down there? Well, most pipe has that because they formed it out of flat plate, curled it up, and fused it together. Drive shafts aren't supposed to have that. They're supposed to be like drawn pipe, so there's no seam. Um, so I'm thinking that this drive shaft, maybe this is the cheapest one they had. So here's the trick, the next trick, to get alignment along the, the center axis of the drive shaft when we put these two pieces together. So what this is, is a snippet of the old drive shaft and then took a slip out of the middle, wide enough so that when I screw this together with a hose clamp, I can get the, the drive shaft onto it. So what do you think? So I lined up this joint with the actual, where that old pipe joint is, um, because I think, uh, you know, it's a bit rough, right? It's not supposed to be like that. It's a bit rough, so I'll put the two rough spots together. This probably needs an, an inch and a saw, saw blade width, an inch and an eighth. Look at that, eh? Beautiful. A little more grease on it. Stick it in here and we are good to go. Yes, yes, here we are. Hey Google, what time is it? It's 7.37 p.m. Hey Google, can I go to bed yet? They say an hour under the covers is worth two on top. So even if you only want a nap, getting into bed can be smart. So there's the lowest spot. We got it zeroed out there. And then if we turn about a quarter of a turn, it goes up about 10 thou, 12 thou. And then if we go another quarter of a turn, it's back to zero. It's not like we're running on a, a machine surface or anything. But you know, as soon as you weld, it's going to move, right? It's going to shift, it's going to contract. The key would be to just spot it, particularly on any place that looks high. So if this looks high, right about there, then we should probably spot it there and there to start with, and then come around to where it's high again, and we'll spot it there and there so that if if anything it pulls it down but that's i mean that's straight across from each other it's 180 degrees those two spots so if we take the low spots okay there's the zero spots right there and there i'll put them in black pen and then find the other zeros because it's zeroing out exactly twice on every revolution there and there and again wouldn't you know it straight across from each other 90 degrees from the red marks so there ain't no way that you should move that <laughs> grounding grounding that's going to be the challenge because you do not want to run the welder through any bearings 
So let's ground it right on there. And hope that doesn't move anything. There we go to set 11 and 9. The new zero is right back to zero again and up to You know what? I don't think <laughs> I don't think I could have got that better with a lathe. Man, oh man, that's uh, see, it's got high and low spots, but they're not alignment spots. They're they're out of alignment spots. It's out of round, is what it is. So from one side to the other, it's really close. Then if you take the uh, ninety degree side, that side to that side it's like bang on button is cool considerably between welds because i don't want to melt the seal out of there I, mean, I think that's the only thing is just that rubber seal in the end so now we'll do some welding in between here So after welding, we've got about 20, yeah, that's a lump on there, but I would say probably about a, well, I don't know, it's a bit of a dip. It's not smooth, eh? It's not round, that's the problem. The pipe's not round to start with. So we've got a variance of about 20 thousandths. So that's, uh, you know, within the tolerance of what they had <laughs> before. So we'll take that as good. So basically, I knocked down all the lumps with the grinder um, because the other issue is you don't want anything that's going to throw a balance off. Now, it's got a, a balance uh, weight here, and we have no way of knowing, right, what sort of balance there is so we just try to make it the same right then again we lined that up right lined it back up that line so this thing is in alignment with the other end still and then um yeah keep it as light as possible um you know as long as your welds are penetrating good you can take them down flat it's not a problem so there's the one inch extension in the drive shaft right to make it an inch longer to match the one inch extension <laughs> in this body, okay, that goes all the way across. So now we've done the catalytic converters, basically removed the catalytic converters, put these dummy pipes in and made it an inch longer. And there's a whole episode on that because that's a, a bit tricky. And other than that, the brake cable underneath We've already moved that mount one inch. And one more thing, when they tell you, don't try this at home, ask yourself, why not? And figure out why not. The reason that we build hot rods is because we want to solve problems on a scale that we can handle in our backyard. <laughs> and the great thing about solving a problem is now you have a solution that all, not only applies to this particular item, like a drive shaft, but it'll apply to lots of things in the future. And I love the whole drive shaft thing because you tell people that, yeah, yeah, I just welded that up myself. And they say, you can't do that. I said, well, you know, a few hundred thousand miles later, but you know, at getting that kind of, yes, I make drive shafts with my bare hands. <laughs> it kind of sets you up so that you can do other things that you've never done before. <laughs> and, you know, conquer, right? Come up with solutions to problems that are not only going to help you fix this problem, they're going to help you fix the next problem, but they're also going to help other people find a solution to their problems. Because it just kind of instills that idea that, you know what, doesn't matter what you come up against, there is a solution and we can find it. Mm -hmm.